Hey everybody, I am very excited to announce the next summer edition of the Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase. All right, and just like last time, these are not paid promotionals in any way. I reached out to these vendors and they were kind enough to work with me on these videos. These are all going to be my honest reviews of these tools and services. And there's going to be a summary slide at the end of each video, just like last time. So the technology that we're going to be reviewing today is there we go. All right. So without further ado, let's go get started. Uh, this is a tool that I've come across recently because there was a big announcement that they uh, said they were going to be one of the first uh, public uh, graph databases out there. And I thought that was kind of interesting. But the second thing is if you type in Postgres and graph, the very first thing that comes up is this vendor. And so I am joined today by Joe. So Joe, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Joe Fagan. I've been with Bit9 about two years. Great. And so can you tell us a little bit more about Bit9? Because this is something that, you know, I've been studying in Graph and, and working in Graph for a very long time. And I know Postgres, but I didn't know about you guys. So if you could just introduce us a little bit for those that don't know. Sure. Well, in 2013 in Seoul in Korea, um, a gentleman had the idea of creating a Graph database and uh, wanted to make it an enterprise class product. He was already very, very familiar with SQL, but he, um, he explored the possibility of creating a graph database from scratch, which would involve, to make it enterprise class, would involve a whole host of other things outside of just writing a database. Um, like writing the database is, is a small amount of making an enterprise class product. So, Instead, he decided to piggyback on probably the world's most successful um, open source project of all time, which is Postgres. It's been going for about 33, 33 years. And um, so what, 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 what he did back then was took Postgres, modified the parser in Postgres heavily, and made it understand, in addition to SQL, made it understand a graph query language, which was emerging at the time called OpenCypher. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the uh, co the founders, I suppose, of major contributors to OpenCypher is Neo4j. Mm -hmm. So if you're familiar with property graphs, you're probably familiar with Neo4j and, very, and, and, and also Cypher. So the, the standard is called OpenCypher, and we, as best as we possibly can adhere to the open cipher standard inside of postgres and it allows existing postgres users to make that very easy transition over to graph yeah and i love that you made that that connection to, to neo because we are also going to have uh, them on the channel so it's going to be interesting to see how how these two compare we have this product called agents graph which is a forked version of postgres mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it's tied to a particular version of Postgres, which is a Postgres 10.4. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our customers have said, look, we'd like to use it with our existing Postgres, not just not just exactly 10.4 and with our you own data sets. want to retrofit it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we, we, um, what we did was we started a project to write an extension to Postgres as opposed to a fork. In other words, you can take an existing... Mm -hmm existing Postgres installation and just plug in uh, as an extension, plug in agents graph functionality, which we've called age. So anyway, it's something we donated to the Apache Software Foundation and it was adopted about a year ago as an incubating project, just under a year. Yeah. Okay, th there are millions and millions of li lines of SQL code out there and zettabytes of SQL uh, curated data out there. So. Um, people who want to explore graph generally have to take their database or a piece of their database, import it into graph and try what they, they need to try. And all of the data needs to be in the graph pertaining to those rows, let's say, or whatever, or tables. With agents graph, you can just take the piece that's interesting in your data set and graphize it. Mm -hmm. So all the boring, like, time uh, time stamp data or rows and rows of just numbers that have no real connectivity connection interest whatsoever mm -hmm. can stay in your in your old traditional table and you can just pick bits of it 
and just model some of it in graph, the, the mm -hmm. bits that you, you think are interesting to explore. So it allows you to piecewise transition from table to graph. As well as that, the graph databases, uh, you know, it's, it, it's quite silly to say they can do everything in SQL database. Of course they can, but with, limita with uh, sure. limitations from flexibility or performance or so on and so forth. So there is a place for SQL databases and rectangular data. Mm -hmm. And there is a place for relational, uh, that's a dangerous word, you know, what I mean is data based on relationships, graph data. Multi-hop. <laughs> there you go. And, and what Agents Graph allows you to do is to work in both worlds simultaneously. So not alone that, we actually support hybrid queries. So mm -hmm. if you're familiar with SQL, you can start off your statement with select from mm -hmm. and what do you normally select from a table well you don't have to you can select from the output of an open cipher query which mm -hmm. which comes back in rows anyway so it's it's mm -hmm. uh, it's something that sql is very familiar with so you can have a select from and, a, and then a cipher query and and vice versa not quite vice versa because it's not quite asymmetric um, a graph input is a graph not a table so but you can query a graph and compare it to values in the table or populate the table with values from the graph and vice versa. That allows you to yeah. really. And, and one thing that I, I think that is important here is, you know, I, I talk about on this channel a lot, like how do you identify if graph is right for you? And one of the things I always talk about is highly related data. So not relational, even yeah, though exactly. it is relations, yeah. is those multi hops, right? And you're right though i mean there's a lot of data that that just doesn't make sense for and putting it into a graph database just it's it's just overkill and so being able to piecemeal it might be helpful for you sure yeah there's a real easy way to get to agents graph one way is you download and run it as, as a as a full fully fledged postgres server on your local pc or, or on a server a local server and attach to it and another is you just fire up a um you just fire up uh, a ag cloud which allows you to explore Fine. So this is AG Cloud, um, and uh, so it, you get to it at agbit9.net. Fine, and uh, you get a chance to register. And once you've registered, you can sign in. And that's the thing I do want to point out is uh, this is open. So you can go in, you can play with it. Um, I know Joe's going to walk us through um, a, a use case uh, that they have pre-populated for you. So if you're not familiar with graph, I love that more graph databases and people that are working in the graph space and different uh, technologies are having some open examples of how to use this technology so people get familiar with it and start to adopt it more. So here you, you can add a new project. And um, the projects we have for most part are, are empty. This is an empty project, which mm -hmm. actually goes through a tutorial on how to use graph. Mm -hmm. um, and this, for instance, is, a, is, an, is the ability to upload your own CSV data mm -hmm. uh, then, and just drag it into the graph and model it as you see fit. And here's the, the standard graph for movie data's project. So th that, that shows that this uh, connected database driver tells you exactly how to connect back to your um back to your own postgres so but let's do that let's do this then so this is the um this is the standard imdb subset mm -hmm. of data and it tells you exactly how to use the thing here so for instance this will show a lot of the graph and it gives you the syntax for using cipher which i is love that yeah i love that there is this this step-by-step -step tutorial kind of showing you not just how to do it but what it is uh, as you go that's nice yeah, and then the graph becomes pre-populated. So if I just launch the viewer, then we can see that we have a pre-populated graph and it tells us that we have this many movies and this many persons, people. And I'll just kill this here. And uh, we also have many ages, acted in, directed, follows, reviewed. So I could choose the acted in or, or just show all here. So that will populate the query editor with a, a command that show me all the relationships in the graph. And then we get this uh, rat's nest here. Of, uh, <laughs> I call it hairball. I call this the hairball model. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, we, we, you, um, by default, we, we default to this cozy Bilkint uh, layout, but different layouts, depending on your data type, different layouts will show you it clusters really quickly. 
and it'll also show you if the data is hierarchical, you'll be able to see it mm. using some of the hierarchical type uh, displays. But uh, uh, concentric is really good as well. So it, pop, it puts yeah. the, the busier nodes to the center. And, and the least... I, I just want to pause here for a second because, um, you know, we're really highlighting some of the, the visual aspects of, of these tool sets um, during this series. And, you know, I love that you have so many different configurations here because but if you can show them the multi hops and how you can get from one distinct thing and go through a series of three different logic hops and, and get an answer much faster than if you're doing a query in a relational database, they get it. It makes it sense to them. So I just wanted to pause there and say that that's pretty cool that you have a few different types of uh, visuals here. There's no limitation in the graph database per se. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. Agents Graph is, okay. is really like that that toolbox, right? And then as long as it's because it's sitting on top of Postgres, which is really the powerhouse. So that's nice. It's it's like you're adding more of those tools for people to do more in Graph, while not having to reinvent the wheel because Postgres was great already, and a lot of people are using it. Exactly. And and you know you can continue on as a as a, if you're not interested in the visualization, you can continue to look at your mm -hmm. your data in tables. So every output. That's represented as a graph. Also, as a table, mm -hmm. as a table representation. Yeah, the opposite isn't true, but it, it's true that every graph is a table representation. So every graph is a table, but not every table is a graph. Got exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, if I, you I, don't I, show edges, you're never going to see. You're going to see nodes, but not a, a graph per se. Yeah. So if I were to, for instance, just go back and say, "Show me the persons," then I'll get something that's not quite a graph. It's just a, a bunch of people. But the, the table then. Well, and I, I want to, can you go back to what you were just showing for a second? There we go. Oh, yes. So yeah, when yeah. you were clicking on node label, edge label, and properties, can you go ahead and show that again? Because it is, it's, it's, is it auto writing the query? Um, when I clicked, when, if I click here, it will auto, auto write a query that will give me those. So if I nice. choose directed in, of course, this is an edge, so it'll it'll show mm -hmm. me a path. So this mm -hmm. is this is going to show me a path, and mm -hmm. that would be a graph. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is also helpful for anyone that there, there's this in between area in in the graph knowledge worker space that I think is is struggling because it's often overlooked, and there is you know the true engineers, and then there's like the end users, right, that are using the data to do something with, whether it's a customer or something else. But then there's the, the analytics folks that are not necessarily the folks that are just using Tableau, but the folks that actually need to use the graph data to find insights. And I think that being able to, and they don't always need to know all about graph. They don't necessarily need to learn Cypher. Things like this is going to, it's really going to help them, right? Because it's, it's automatically, writing that cipher query so that they don't have to they just select the data that they're interested in and then they do what they do exactly and i think that the the hairball as much as people hate it and i am one of them i think if you zoom out enough you can start to see clusters of similar things right and i think that's yeah. that's helpful um circular reasoning is another one that i already mentioned um, you know being able to i think the one that you showed were the the circles in the middle um the nodes Create a centric, yeah. yeah, and those were the ones that were the highest density, right? So yeah, that one. So it's like, that's quick. Okay, I did a visual. Do I care what every single one of the nodes says? Do I care what all of the, the edges say? No, I really just wanted to get a visual to see what those two middle circles were, right? Those exactly. two middle right. nodes. Yeah, exactly. Or in pattern matching, if you're just oh, particularly yeah. interested in a, in a particular pattern, like uh, mm -hmm. overconnected, maybe people who are overconnected in a in a in insure, car insurance claim situation <laughs> and you, you think oh okay there's a fraud those things are, are sometimes can be just as seen from afar in a graph and then if you want to zoom in you can just say okay well i'd like to see the other i'd like to see how this person here well that, that person was very boring he didn't have any other connections but i'd like to see how other things in the graph are are are, uh, are related and it allows you to pull out and see another great use is like for instance, if you wanted to say you want, let's let's go back and just grab some more data here. Say you want to do um, design a jury service where you wanted to make pretty sure that people were not going to collaborate. So you, mm. you wanted people who are rather disjointed. Um, it's quite difficult to ask 
from a list of hundreds in an Excel data graph. Um, show me people who are disjointed. Here you can find people disjointed very, very quickly. You just grab that person and then grab all these associates and grab all these associates. And now the further you move, the further, the, as you keep pulling, as you keep pulling here, you're getting people that are, if I could use my mouse, you're getting people that are more and more disconnected. Uh, That's really so. cool. I don't know if I've seen that exact uh, type of, of data visualization. I, and you're doing like the, the click to grab more um, from each hop yeah. away. That's really cool. I haven't seen that before. That's neat. So I have no idea who this is. This is Robert Longo and this is Christian Bale. So I know that they're not very connected. And <laughs> If I go back to the, if you remember the names, I don't remember the names. Christian Bale, you remember I remember, that? I remember this Bale. one. I don't know the other guy. Robert Longo, okay. So Robert if I go back in here and go to, I've got this like shortest path query stuff here. So I could say, okay, I want to specifically know what is the shortest path between those two. Um, so I go to my uh, command editor here and I'm just going to put, copy this in. Okay, well, we know in a second. Cool. So this gives us the shortest path. Um, this is a great uh, yeah, parlor name. Yeah, the first name. path is so helpful. Yeah, so that gives you the shortest path between those two characters there. Okay. I know, well, we, we, um, we have a lot of intelligent routines that just sits. It's actually not part of the open side for specification, but it's something we make available to our customers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, we have uh, cluster identification and um, mm -hmm. um, distance metrics and uh, a whole host of algorithms, graph related algorithms that really help. So, uh, for AI and machine learning, which is a, a great use in Korea, we have a knowledge graph that traces dependencies for kids who want to learn. So in Korea, uh, a significant chunk of expendable income is, sent, is spent on giving the children additional classes outside of school to get them help them get their grades and one company that specializes on that in that um, just tracks dependencies based on success and failure for so if a student goes in and he he's able to solve the find the hypotenuse thing mm -hmm. then um the the, the 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 software is able to track the dependencies or if he's not it's just as interesting it's able to track the dependencies well how do, how well did he do with basic algebra Algebraic manipulation. How, uh, does he know what Pythagoras theorem is? So that, does, does he know how to take a square root? Yeah, so it, that's it, interesting. It sees the dependencies, and if somebody fails, it's able to go back and say, "Well, which of these other areas, these other dependencies, yeah. might need more work?" It's almost like they're uh, trying to track the learning outcomes of some of these these factors in the educational uh, sphere, which is very, very cool, very fascinating. I'd love, I would is. love to dig into that that use case more on another maybe yes, another video just on that because I haven't heard that as a use case, and that sounds yeah, very fascinating. It's a free product. You can yeah. play with. You can upload your CSV data. You can upload your code. Um, your, your cipher code or SQL code. Uh, and we also, Agents Graph is also, like the vast majority of Agents Graph users use the community edition, which is free of charge too. But if you want the additional algorithms that we've layered on top of Agents Graph and you want the additional support and maintenance, then there you can pay, you can pay. And we have a lot of paying customers. All right, so the last thing, Joe, that I would like to ask is, um, I know that one of the main reasons that I, I originally saw you folks is because of that announcement of going going public um, with the company. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, what does that mean for you? Like to be able to say that you're the one of the first graph databases to go public. Like, what is why, why is that so important? Why should we pay attention to that? Well, um, the reason it's important to us is a lot of companies in Korea, a lot of artificial intelligence related companies um, in, in just in last year, in 2020, they uh, became public. And um, of course, our founders are, are there and our CEO is there in Korea. And we submitted our product for a technology evaluation uh, probably 18 months ago. And in December 2020, um, it, it passed the technology evaluation of COSDAQ, which is the, the trading board of the Korean Stock Exchange, mm -hmm. the Korean mm -hmm. COSDAQ. And um, 
So its technical capability has been proven. Not alone that, we got the highest rating. Oh, wow. And Congratulations. So there's a lot of, and um, Korea are, are, have a history of being really interested in investing in in really innovative companies like Samsung and so forth. Mm-hmm. So um, we're, 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 who's one of our customers as well. So we're really happy to be uh, uh, at the table with these very big uh, artif- companies and also mm-hmm. people who are in the artificial intelligence space in Korea. Mm-hmm. And if we can go public there, it just opens the opportunity for yeah. Uh, yeah, for going public in in other. Well, um, and and one thing I'll I'll note for the audience is you know if you're if you're not familiar if you haven't gone up against this before, um, in my day job when we're assessing vendors that we're going with, we always look at you know are are they new on the scene are they a startup and usually when they're a startup even in a very advanced stage where they're still having to go out and get funding you always have to look at well how much funding did they get are they going to get it next year when it's a public company. You don't have to worry about that because um, it's it's it doesn't have to get funding. It has um, that that board and there's stocks and you know all of those other things. So it's more of I don't want to say legit because that's not true. I think a lot of startups are totally legit, but it's a easier sell sometimes yeah. to senior stakeholders when you say, hey, it's a public uh, publicly traded company. You can go in, you can check out what's going on with it. They feel a little bit more comfortable with that sometimes. I have definitely worked with startups as well. So it's not to say yeah. one is better than the other. It's just sometimes it's an easier sell as far as uh, the business financial folks. <laughs> so yeah, so although you haven't heard of Aegis Graph, in Korea, we're a very substantial company who's been well, trading for and eight I, years. Yeah, I hope that's going to change. I hope more, more folks get to, to hear about you.